So far, we've seen three different ways of generating power laws. We started with preferential attachment, or rich get richer models, and then looked at how combinations of exponential distributions can yield power laws. And lastly, we looked at multiplicative processes that can yield power laws, and also log normal distributions. What all of those generating mechanisms for power laws have in common is that they're probabilistic. The patterned outcome that we see the power law distribution or the long tail is the result of the accumulation of a large number of random events. In this section, I'll talk about a very different way of thinking about the origins of power laws, namely optimization. So we'll think of some system as um, trying to accomplish some task in an optimal way. So we'll come up with some sort of a cost function and show that minimizing that cost function can yield a power law. As with much of the rest of this unit, um, the mathematics is a bit, um, a bit too involved to go into these models in much detail. So I'm going to try to present, again, an overview of a couple different models and give you the idea, the logic behind them. Um, so we're going to look at three models. And we'll start by thinking about properties of distribution networks. The first example of optimization giving rise to power laws concerns distribution networks. So um, an example of this might be a transportation system, say uh, trains or highways or uh, airplane flights. And we want this to be optimal in some sense. And there are two things that we'll want to trade off uh, for optimality. One is would like to be able to get from here to there, making the minimum number of stops. So we want to do two things. We want to minimize stops. If this was a transportation network, you'll call it a stop. Or generally, maybe you might call it a, a hop or a station or something. I'll show a picture in a second. So if you want to fly from one side of the country to another, you'd like to go directly and not have to travel through 10 or 12 other cities. And the other thing we'd like to do in their network is to minimize um, I guess I'll call it the length. And by that, I mean the total distance of all the links. So. Um, it would be nice if we had direct flights from every city in America to every other city in America. That would minimize the number of stops, but that would surely maximize the length, the amount, of the distance that the airplanes would have to fly. So there's a trade-off between these two things. And in looking for uh, some balance between these two, we're often led towards power laws. So let me um, illustrate this with uh, a simple picture. And this picture is from the book Scale-Free Networks by Guido uh, Caldarelli. I'll put the reference down here. Um, here's, the, here's what the book looks like. Um, lots of good stuff about power laws in here. Very clear writing. Um, so uh, definitely a, it's a nice book, highly recommended. Um, and again, it's got considerations. It's, it's not specific to networks, even though networks is the theme. Lots of good stuff in there. All right. So um, here's uh, the figure from the Calderelli book. And he talks about this in terms of a um, water network. So maybe I'll use the same, same sort of language just for consistency's sake. So the picture here is that this node in the middle, which I just colored blue, although it still looks black, is a well. That's where right, a source for water. And then these other um, spots, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, these other 12, they are houses that would like water. And so one way to distribute water to them is to just have a pipe that runs from the well to every house. And this is great because everybody gets their own pipe. It's a very short path. You, know, you might think this path uh, should go to this one first and then that one. But um, the, as far as this one is concerned, it's optimal. And right, this optimizes. Um, individually each each node. So this is like having a direct flight 
from every city to some uh, big city uh, or something. So the drawback for this is that it is um, inefficient because the total length of pipe that you would need is seems larger than necessary, right? As I was saying before, it seems overkill, unnecessary to have a separate pipe for this and for this, right? Maybe they could, could share. Um, all right, so that's one solution, and that maximizes or optimizes this. It minimizes the number of stops. Everybody gets a direct link. Everybody has a direct flight. Okay, so what if we wanted instead to minimize the length of the pipes or the length that the airplanes travel? Well, here is one possible minimal path. Again, here's the well in the middle. It doesn't really sh show up as blue. Maybe that's a little bit better. Um, so here, this turns out to be a minimal path. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're able to get water to 12 houses with just uh, 12 steps. Um, so this is great if the pipes are really expensive, but it's not so great, maybe particularly if you're down here at the end of the line, because maybe right, these houses use a lot of water, you don't get enough. Maybe there's a break here, right? This house has an accident and the water stops and so then all these houses don't get water and that's a bummer. Um, so this is optimal in terms of minimizing length but it actually maximizes the number of stops. So we need some way to compromise between these two and it turns out that a good way to do that is to use a fractal like network. So uh, here's an example of that and it turns out that actually this has one, two, three, four, uh, the same total length of pipe, same total mileage that the airplanes would have to travel as this one. But this is um, definitely more efficient in the sense that there's not this long chain that could be disrupted. So um, here, every house is either directly connected to the water or connected through only one intermediary. Um, right, and this is sort of how transportation networks work. You might have some big hub, right, Paris or Frankfurt, um, or, I don't know, Ni Nairobi or New York City. And then you'll have little regional hubs that would feed into the big hub. Um, so, certainly not a mathematical proof, but just a heuristic argument that when you're trying to do some optimization in a distribution network like this and you're balancing these two things, you want to minimize the number of stops and minimize the length, you can't do the two at the same time, that very often um, under broad conditions, the best, um, the optimal network that you get out is something that is fractal like, like this. Um, and Hopefully you can sort of see the practicality. The picture is that you might have um, then copies of this network right, um, sort of going out. So if, if you had a larger number of houses that you needed to service, um, you could repeat this pattern at, at different scales, and this would be an efficient way of getting watered houses without using too much pipe. All right. So, um, so we, we're going to see these self-similar sorts of structures, and we know that self-similar structures are related to power laws because power laws are the only self-similar or scale-free distribution. So this is one example of how um, an optimality principle could give rise to a power law.